spoiler warning, by which I mean this printer has spoiled every other 3D printer for me. The Monoprice Voxel is a unique, easy to use, beginner friendly 3D printer that brings 3D printing to the masses with its simple menu system. Uh, this, oh, let's try that again. With its unique menu system displayed on a 2.8 inch color touchscreen, uh, assisted leveling. Mm. Man, I'm just not hitting it today. For behind scenes information, step by step instructions of the builds featured, and much more, visit 3dpprofessor.com. The Monoprice Voxel is a unique, easy to use, beginner friendly 3D printer that brings 3D printing to the masses with its simple menu system displayed on a 2.8 inch color touchscreen. It's got an assisted leveling system that reduces calibration to a single tap on the touchscreen and the print nozzles can be swapped out in seconds without the need for tools of any kind. It features 8 gig of internal memory for storing your 3D models on with a Wi-Fi radio hotspot option for connecting to your PC and a built-in camera for monitoring print operations. And best of all, the printer comes fully assembled. It includes sample 3D models and filament. It allows you to start printing within minutes of taking it out of the box. All of that is what the copy says. But you know what? The best part is it's... It's pretty much true, all of it. Now, I'm just gonna come out and say it right now. This is my new favorite recommended 3D printer for beginners. It's, it's a little more expensive than my old favorite, the Monoprice Select Mini V2, but it's, it's worth every penny of additional cost. It's, it's just so easy to use. It's, it's almost like somebody else is running the printer for you. It's, it's that good. When I turned on this machine, well, when I first turned it on, I, I heard a little familiar jingle. And as soon as I heard that, it's, it's the same ditty that my Replicator 1 makes. And it's, it's the same ditty that every FlashForge 3D printer makes because they're all built on the same Mighty Board pioneered at MakerBot in this Replicator 1. So I contacted the people at Monoprice about this and they told me, yeah, they had partnered with FlashForge to bring this 3D printer to you. It's basically a repackaged uh, Adventure 3, which that's what the FlashForge printer is that's similar to this one. Now, I don't know if there's any big differences between these two machines. And hey, I'd, I'd love to find out platform. However, it became clear very quickly to me that FlashForge has been making some serious advancements since the days of my old reliable Replicator 1 here on my desk. First of all, I, I want to address what having a Mighty Board in here means. It means that this 3D printer doesn't use G-code. It uses X3G, which is, it's, it's basically a binary G-code with absolutely no advantages over normal G-code. <laughs> but it, it means that you can't use Cura to prepare your prints for this 3D printer. But you might think that's a bad thing. And in the past, not using an open source software like that has been a bad thing. But the software that they have, it's called Flash Print and Oh my goodness, at least for the voxel, it, it let's 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 jump real fast to my computer screen so you can see this. Do you see what I'm looking at here? This is just a file directory in Windows of of my low poly dinos, of course, and it changes the icons for your STLs into little models into little renders of the STLs. Now this this is just a tiny little thing, but it has so changed the way that I use my computer. No longer do I go, hmm, what is this STL sitting in my downloads directory? I can see it. I can I can look at it and I can really easily curate through my list of files. 
this this is a little change, but guys, everybody who is making slicers, take note of this feature. It is amazing. Now, okay, that's that's a little thing, and it doesn't really answer the question of how well it prints or how well it uses, but it, it was kind of my first indication that this isn't the open source machines that I'm used to dealing with. This touchscreen on it is fantastic. It's everything I've ever wanted for so long out of my interfaces. It's got just very simple menu items, most important one right there on top. It's got scripted loading and unloading filament procedures. Just yes, so much yes. But the Wi-Fi antenna on this printer is where it really shines. In the past, I've talked about putting the Monoprice Select Mini on your Wi-Fi, but its Wi-Fi is really slow and not very functional. Honestly, I don't recommend using that function, but this printer's Wi-Fi is super fast and super functional. Now, admittedly, it's a little bit clunky getting it onto the Wi-Fi because this screen is so tiny that you only get half of the keyboard at a time to play with. So to type your Wi-Fi password in, you have to like type the letters on half your keyboard and then sw swap over to the other half and try it. Admittedly, that's a little bit frustrating. But once you finish that, oh, the world opens up to you. You can actually update this printer's firmware over its Wi-Fi. You don't need to run any weird hand-edited scripts to make it happen. It's good. It's easy. And I want to take an aside to just a little gripe here. In order to connect your computer to the Wi-Fi, you have to do one of two things. You can either connect it to the cloud optionally, and I've talked about cloud computing and 3D printing in the past, and I'm not a huge fan, but the fact that they can use it, but that they don't make it a requirement very good in my mind, but if you want to connect your computer to it, you need to find this machine's IP address on your network, and it's kind of hard to find it. It's kind of buried in the menu system there. You got to kind of go through two menus and five clicks to be able to find it, and it, as long as it doesn't change its IP address, that's fine. You only really need to find it that one time, but I kind of would like to see that piece of information just, just displayed on the front menu, even if it's only like five point font down there at the bottom, just just in case. I think that that would be a great thing. And admittedly, I stole that idea from the Muse laser cutter that I use at the Makerspace. But I think, it's a gra I think that that piece of information up front right there would be great to have. Now, but once you have the Wi-Fi connected and once you find its IP address, listen to this. You will never need to do the SD card shuffle ever again. Never again. None of these features are uncommon in high-end thousands of dollars 3D printer, but I have never seen these features this well implemented in a 3D printer for less than $3,000, let alone one that only costs $400. You just Open your slice in flash print, hit go on your computer, and the voxel that's sitting across the room springs to life and starts printing. It's fast, it's seamless. It feels good, man. Oh, and I didn't even mention the build area yet where the Monoprice Select Mini is a 10 centimeter cube. This one is 15 centimeters cube, which isn't a huge difference, but it is just enough to take you from 10 centimeters cubed is big enough to print, honestly, most of the stuff that you're gonna want to, to big enough to print practically everything that you want to. It's not CR10 size. If you're printing props or you're regularly printing things on a CR10 that's much larger, that's big enough to put around your head, yeah, 15 centimeters cubed is going to feel a little bit constrained. But for most of us, honestly, take a look at the stuff that you print and tell me that most of it wouldn't fit on this thing's build area. Dang, Monoprice, what are you guys doing? You guys sell stereo equipment. You should not be selling, quite frankly, the best 3D printer on the market for beginners. Seriously, wow. Every rose has its... Oh. There we go. You stay there. The filament spool. Oh, where is... Oh, my goodness. 
Let's, let's start the whole thing over again. The 3D Printing Professor is supported by you. Viewers like you can support videos like this directly on PayPal and Patreon and make the projects and builds you see possible. To support, find the links wherever links are found. Thank you! Every rose has its thorns. And yes, the Monoprice Voxel does have its downsides. And they're worth, they're worth mentioning. For one, the, the filament spool that goes in there, they're, they've got a little cubby here in the side that you put your filament spool into and it's not chipped but it is kind of half sized they've got a tiny little hole for it and it's got a cubby that's perfectly sized for this and you can use any filament you want but you've got to kind of leave that side open and figure out a way to to prop the spool up there and the feed mechanism okay the filament scripts are great, but the loading script advances the filament so slowly. It like takes two solid minutes to get it from the feed mechanism to the nozzle. And on another printer, I would just, you know, squeeze that feed arm and advance the filament manually. And on this printer, it does have that feed arm, but it's, it's kind of hidden just inside the case where my big fat man thumbs can't get to it to open it up. I would seriously consider cutting a hole in the side of this case to give myself access to it if I were going to keep this machine around. More about that later. But yeah, I, I would modify the case to this machine so that I could get at that. If the loading script would just you know, do a quick advance the for a little while when it detects the filament in there. Oh yeah, it, it has filament detection. I forgot to mention it. And you know what? So did Monoprice. I don't ever see anything about their filament detection mentioned in their copy, but if you run out of filament, the print will pause and let you load it. Maybe the reason why they don't mention it though is because the filament can't be reversed out nicely. You You kind of have to remove the tubing on the top of the feed mechanism and manually pull the filament out from there, which can be kind of a pain, especially if you're working with a tall print that's gone up real high and you're, you're jammed up against the top of the print. So yeah, because this top here doesn't open, that could be a pain. And so yeah, maybe I can see why they don't mention it. But you know, it is great for, for printing sample rolls. In fact, all of the sample filament prints that I did, I did on this printer, including the ABS print. Yes, for a $400 printer, it prints ABS. In fact, you'd think full enclosure, it would be really good at printing ABS. Well, it prints ABS, but it, it doesn't print ABS as well as my old reliable replicator one where I can turn off all fans on it. The overhangs on it aren't super great. It's capable, but not impressive, but it can print other materials and I played with other materials for it. And yeah, it, it was really cool. Another downside while it is enclosed, it's not vented in any way. And again, another modification I would make to this printer would be to cut a hole in the back, add maybe a, a carbon filter in here and then vent it outside so that, especially in light of current worries about the particulates of 3D printing, just being able to vent it to the outside, but you'd have to make that modification uh, your own self. Another downside is this fancy little removable nozzle. The problem is that at the time of this recording, you can't get the nozzle replacements anywhere, not from Monoprice, not from Flashforge, now, part of the reason is maybe because this printer is so new on the market that they haven't really finished setting up the support for it. And, and so they haven't got the parts out there. And right now, probably nobody needs a replacement nozzle, but the nozzle is the hardest working part of any 3D printer. So it's not a question of if, but when it's going to fail. So if you're thinking about buying one of these printers, check the retailer, see if the nozzles are available anywhere. And if they are, maybe buy a spare or two just so that you won't be caught without them when you need one. They're not available right now, but hopefully when you watch this in the future, 
they will be. But even with that, even even without that ability, I would be willing to take a chance on this printer and trust them that they will make these available. Now, the other thing is, I don't know what they're going to charge for those nozzle replacements. Hopefully they won't go the way of MakerBot and make it like a $150 consumable. I hope it's a reasonable price. I'd, I'd almost be willing to, you know what? I'm not going to set a price. I'm not going to say what I'd be willing to pay. I'm going to let Flash Forge and Monoprice set the price for this. And if it's outrageous, I will regretfully withdraw my endorsement of this machine because it's it's an amazing printer. It doesn't do everything, but like the Millennium Falcon, it's got it where it counts. And if there ends up being a deal breaker like an overpriced consumable on it, I will be very regrettably disappointed with it. So let's hope that that doesn't happen. Fingers crossed and let's hope, well, good things for the future of this because besides this, I wholeheartedly endorse this printer. Of course, the biggest downside of this printer is they're not going to let me keep it. Come on, guys. You, you could at least let me keep this one. Well, maybe not this one because the camera on it is is kind of broken. Okay, you guys take this one back and you send me a good one or or Flash Forge. Hey, you know I'd love to see what's different between this and the Adventure Three. Heck, quite frankly, I'd I'd probably wholeheartedly sell out the Flash Forge right now. Notice me, senpai. Ugh. Nobody with a voice this deep should use that word in any context. It's pretty obvious how I feel about this machine. I am enamored with it. In fact, if I bowed mouthed any other 3D printer recently, it's probably because I was comparing it to this printer. The Weedoo 192 is admittedly a more capable printer in a lot of ways, but it, it lacks some of this printer's buttery smooth workflow. It doesn't even have Wi-Fi, the, the Weedoo printer. You know, honestly, my perfect 3D printer would be the Weedoo F192 with the Voxels user interface and Wi-Fi and really slick slicer. So I guess if I were, you know, being fair, I would say that the F192 from Weedoo is my recommendation if you're in a corporate environment and need the power. Whoops. And the Voxel is my choice if you're a beginner. Honestly, in a by a huge margin it's my choice if you're a beginner it's worth every penny of the price and the price really isn't that unreasonable so i guess that's it and i hope that you will check this printer out and as always thank you very much to, for watching to this point big thanks to my direct backers and did you know that i'm social there are links to twitter facebook and my discord channel wherever links are found. Come by and say hi. I like it when people say hi. But until then, remember, safety first. I'll see you next time. Butter, buttery, butterfly, buttery. See, it's, it, I'm getting to doubles right there and that's messing me up. B-roll, baby.